I remember what I have to do. I always forget this. I have to mute this right here. All right. I'm going to, I'm just doing this quick live just to show you why everybody has no energy. Like, I can't even do anything. I mean, I'm getting little items done and such, but everybody's so slow. And it all has to do with the astrology. My mic is on. I can see that. And I'm sharing screen because it is coming up on YouTube Live as well. So now, since that's all good, I'm going to minimize this here and focus on this. Okay. Looks good. I tried recording in stereo sound so i tested it and it, it came out a bit loud so you might have to lower your volume maybe i'll talk a little lower but um all right so this is what we have here basically i shrink the screen down but i go to astro seek horoscope.astro seek.com i've been using this you know for a while i'm used to it so let's look at today's chart here and we're gonna go uh we're gonna see what we have to look forward to in this month of October it gets better because right now as you can see here we got mercury retrograde this r stands for retrograde this numbers here stand for which house it's in you see first house second house third house fourth house fifth six seven eight nine twelve and it's like a little bit of an astrology it took me a long time to even like start even understanding this stuff knowing all the symbols for example here I'll tell you right now let me start off with uh, Aries right because it goes this way but you know, when, when uh, Santos Bonacci does it, he does it this way, you know, Aries, Taurus, because this is like the rising of the sun in spring. So, but technically that the uh, constellation of Aries, Taurus, see, this is Aries, that looks like a ram. This is Taurus, looks like a bull. This is Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn. Aquarius, then Pisces, and then that's it. So now, uh, and then the planets, just so you know them, you know, I know them by heart, but I'll tell you, this is sun and they're listed here. This is the symbol for sun. It tells you right now it is 4 p.m. Okay, let me go to the right time because this is not the right time. Oh, I, I started doing this. I bookmarked it, so that's why. So let me just see here. Um, Oh, I guess it's at 12, so it's four hours. Let me go out, let me go an hour to the time where the sun is exactly right now. 1600 military time. Yep, that's where the sun is right now. And then, you know, so basically sun was just at noon right here. Um, oh, look at that. Sun is, if, if we didn't have sun, look, sun is conjunct, is very close to conjunct Mars. This is why, like, I'm so furious. But I, I like that energy. It's just that for what? I don't know if anybody else is feeling this, but um, that's the only forward moving major planet. Actually, Venus is forward moving too. Um, now, what I'm going to do is just go by day here. Uh, so, you know, Venus is moving, so that, that you know, maintains our, that's Mercury. Okay, wait, wait. Yeah, with Venus, that when it's not R, R means retrograde here. So, um, Venus is forward moving, and Mars is forward moving. So, this is going to be your fire, your drive, your, you know, your motivation, which we, we, do, we do not lack. Right now, we do have the motivation, but because the other planets are, um, you know, in retrograde, it's kind of like we don't know where to apply our energy or nothing's cooperating. That's exactly, that's only what I'm, you know, sensing, but I can tell my phone's not ringing for work, you know, for my old uh, job, my roofing company. So the Venus energy is the, like, you know, the loving energy. This loving energy is forward moving. Uh, it's, it's in Scorpio already. You know, just so you know, Mercury and Venus never, but Mercury, I should do this right now. Mercury, just a, like a little bit of a lesson, you know, Mercury uh, maintains distance from the sun. It's like 30 degrees. It's oval shaped or Mercury as close as 29 million, as far as this is freaking bullshit. I want to say how many degrees. This is from what I know right now. 
and I'm almost sure I'm right. Because I can't get that, because this is all telling you this 40 days, which is bullshit. Uh, these luminaries are very close to us. And uh, so now Mercury never, uh, never goes more than 30 degrees. So if the sun was right here, Mercury is either before it or behind it in, in retrograde. So Mercury is, is in a retrograde. It could be forward uh, ahead of it, but then ret retrogrades. See, it's R, that little R right there. So this is your little Mercury here, but it never goes further than, let's say, if the sun is at seven degrees Libra, it would never go more than seven degrees or so in Scorpio or seven degrees in Virgo, right? Whereas Venus, which is, we call it the morning star and the evening star. Right now, it's the evening star. So when the sun sets at this line right here, sunset, we see that beautiful Venus. Oh my God, what a beautiful energy. And then after, you know, when it's like eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 o'clock, then Jupiter noon, you see Jupiter's, sorry, Jupiter's right here. When Jupiter goes at noon, oh my God, that's such a beautiful, and I'm a, you know, I'm a Sagittarius, but uh, Jupiter is basically my ruling planet, uh, you know, meaning that Jupiter is in its house when I was born. So Jupiter was in Sagittarius. Not everybody has that. The only, per the only people that have, um, that are guaranteed that they have one is Leo's because you have to have sun in Leo. If you were born, if you're a Leo, you have one planet at least in its uh, ruling house, which is Leo right here. For example, uh, what's his name? What's that guy's name? The actor, um, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise has three planets in their respective houses. And uh, see, for a Leo, it's kind of easy because Mercury, if Mercury is is in uh, Virgo, then Mercury is in his ruling house. So Mercury rules uh, Virgo and Gemini right here. You know, it, it rules these two houses. It's the sun and the moon. Let me do something. I'll show you. Watch. Let me go by hour and then I'll start back on this because this is all important. Watch this. I'll show you the way it should be with Leo and Cancer right at noon. Okay, right here. So we got Aries, right? Then we got your Taurus, and then we got Gemini, and then we got Cancer, we got Leo, we got Virgo, we got Libra, we got Scorpio, we got Sagittarius. Okay, watch this. Sun and the moon. Sun, moon, right? See, these are the biggest two luminaries. Then Mercury rules these two houses. Let me just go a little bit more. It went too much. No, no, it went the other way. I wanted them to line up a little. Up oh, too much. I just wanted these, these, these to line up perfect. Give me one second. Hour, 10 minutes. Perfect. Look at that. Okay. So now we got your sun, you got your moon. Then Mercury rules these two houses. And then Libra is ruled by Venus. This is all by design, because if this is the middle, you know, Venus never sways more than 40 degrees to my knowledge, you know. So Venus rules Libra, Venus rules Taurus. We know that my father was a Taurus. He had that beautiful Venusian loving energy. Um, and then you got your Libras to have that too. Then we know that um, Scorpio, right? Uh, Aries rules Mars. This is so symmetric. So Mars rules Aries and Scorpio, right? But Scorpio always also, I believe, is ruled by Pluto, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, that now Jupiter and Pisces have something different. Jupiter is it rules Sagittarius, it also rules Pisces secondarily because Neptune, look at that, Neptune we already know is in Pisces. Neptune is in Pisces, so it has its, that's why, you know, we could, we're we dreaming big right now. That's why actually why we're even doing this channel is because Neptune is in is in uh, Pisces. This, this is the big dreamer right here. Uh, together with Jupiter, you know, Jupiter, when Jupiter is in Sagittarius, when Jupiter is happy, right now it's not, it's not super happy. And then plus it's retrograde. When Jupiter is happy, they, it's the higher knowledge coming from the center of the galaxy, if the galaxy exists. But it's, it's just a way to translate that, those um, concepts and terminologies, you know, 
if you believe that there is a solar system or uh, you know whatever your beliefs are but there's definitely something out there and it's magnificent it's just you know that's why i can't wait till i get on the open seas on my yacht and i'll be cruising the atlantic and uh, and you don't have to worry about the chemtrails anymore they don't spray in the ocean so you see billions and billions of stars. Then I could start stargazing. Then I could start, uh, you know, learning how to navigate. I want to navigate. I want to go. I want to have the North Star right under me. This way, that I would probably be like where Atlantis is down by the Antarctic. Is from what my knowledge is now. You know, what I know today is not what I'm going to know in a year from now. So right now, I'm ignorant to the knowledge that I'm going to have and receive in, you know, a year from now, 10 years from now. Let me just check this uh, YouTube here quick. Okay, that looks good. Cause I, I, I minimized that page on a different uh, screen. So I, I don't see myself. Okay, so now where was I? And then, then we get down here where Saturn rules. So Saturn rules Capricorn over here. And how it happens to be right at the winter because this is hell. You know, this is when it's the coldest. This is the, you know, you know, uh, Christmas day is right here. You know, right when we go through our hell right here from Capricorn to Aquarius. And so it's the, the three days of darkness is from the 21st when it goes into Capricorn, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. And then 25th, it's pretty much, they call it a noose, a, you know, like a, the Christ is born. It's because for three days, there's the, there's, it's, the, it's the lowest amount of sunlight in the Northern Hemisphere. We, you know, it's guaranteed for sure, just like the exact opposite, which is June 21st, which is up here, you know, June 21st, right when we go into Cancer, right? It's the day when there's the most amount of sunlight in the Northern Hemisphere. So it's, you know, it's December 21st, 22nd, 23rd. It goes, there's no difference for those three days. So it's kind of in limbo. And then over here, same thing for three days. It's like in New York, it's about 10 hours. Like it gets dark, like even the twilight, it goes into like 10 o'clock, especially if there's no chemtrails. Okay, when is this? Oh, this is today. The moon is in opposition to Pluto. See, that's another thing, you know, uh, the moon is in opposition. Oh, the moon is in cancer right now. Am I right? September 30th? Okay, yeah, the moon is in cancer. So it's fertility, uh, you know, uh, but with everything all retrograde, you can't even think about, you know, like having sex. But usually when the moon goes into, into when and I'm going to do a whole, not a series, but I'm going to do more of these. I'm going to do these if I can. Also, I'm going to show, you know, let's see, because I've been wanting to know helioviewer.org because you want to we'll let that load for a bit oh look at that nice sunspot nice sunspot that's what's giving us that because there is a, 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 an energy it's just because everything else is if there was no sunspots we would be like super dull we wouldn't have, but there's a nice sunspot right there and then we got we got two right here. This one is the energy. You see, when you have it here, what you have to consider is when, when you see a sunspot on the side right there, you have to know that this is hitting you in the morning, right? This is going to be hitting you at about one, two o'clock because it's on the left side, you know, because this sun is always facing us just the way it, it, it it's, it's actually not. It's not facing us like this. It rotates. This is my theory. I've been studying this for a while. So you see that energy we're getting in the morning, so clear and everybody, you know, every, it's such a beautiful energy these past few days, it's because of this sunspot. So now when this comes and faces us, it's like around one o'clock uh, because this goes and it rotates, I believe around the globe, the, the planet, the plane, the flat planet, not the globe. I have to start getting that out of my mind, but you know, anyway. And then this is going to hit us. And then also, this is a tether point. This is going to be the tether point with Venus. Let's see what this is. Sun. The moon. What's causing this is because the moon is on the right side of the sun. So when the moon is on the right side of the sun, it tugs and it creates. They don't show it here, but you would see like a plasma, like a plasma thing, you know, like almost in these video games or in these movies. 
This is, this is being caused directly by the sun. This, I don't know. No, it's being caused by Mars. This is being caused by Mars, and then this is being caused by Venus. See, let me go this way. Our, or Mercury, Mercury and Venus. So, Sun, oops. Such a delay because of this zoom. Okay, sun, sun. See these these two suns. These are the solar activity. It's a tether point, right? So now in the summertime, I wanted to overlay this map on. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it in the video. I'm gonna overlay this map on to a map of the uh, earth. Let me see if I can do that now. I already did this. Open image in a new tab. Okay. And then let me take this over here. And then um, map, what is that flat earth map? Images. I don't like this. I wanted that other map that I saw in that video. But anyway, it's good enough. Open image in a new tab. Okay, let me see if I can enlarge this. Okay, watch this. This is a juicy. So now we got this, we got this, we got this, we got this. When you're in this area here, you know, from like Florida up here, the sun is all the way, it's, well, it's halfway. So it's at Columbia. The sun is going right over here because the weird thing about, about Columbia, which is right here. Now, when we're over here, the sun only comes from the South to the North. It only gets to Florida. That's the, tr the Tropic of Cancer. So we only see the sun going from very low in December and it just starts rising every day, every day, every day. And then it comes right to a straight. In Colombia and Brazil, it's completely different. Over here, it goes one direction, then it loops over them and it goes in the other direction. So on September 21st, the sun is right above them, just like it is in New York on June 21st. So now, now when it's going into Capricorn in the, the, the uh, what's it called again? The Tropic of Capricorn, which is down here, right? The sun goes from up straight above them at their head to the other side. It's the weirdest thing. If you could imagine it in your mind. And then when it gets to here, right? When it gets to this Tropic of Capricorn, all these people that are down in these areas, they get all of these energies right here because those tether points go right over their head. And then us, us up here, we're so far from that, from those trines and those squares that we only get a little bit of it. Because another thing with the sun is the sun goes upward, like, you know, upward like this. So when it goes down there, it goes lower. So the sun gets bigger in their view. And then it gets hot. So you really want to be down in Brazil, like Rio de Janeiro um, in like December and stuff. So, I mean, that's my plan. Colombia is, is, is nice and hot, yes. But if you go down here, you get that sun, you could bake it, you get all that energy. You get all the energy from all these trines and these squares here because they cross right above you. The tether point, you're getting all that plasma from this. You see, but not here. Not, not when you're over here because you're so far away from it. Now in the summertime, that's a different story. Those trines, they cross us. They cross us because the sun comes all the way up to Florida. This is Florida. You know, this is Florida. This is the Gulf of this is the Caribbean here. This is Florida. You know, that's where, it's like, I believe that's where the Tropic of, uh, it's in Mexico, like Tropic of Cancer is right over here. So then we get a little bit of that energy. All right, so that's it.
I was as clear as I could be. So now we're going to go daily. By day. And we're going to see because we got some good news. These planets are going to be going out of retrograde and going forward. And we're going to do some investigating here. Okay. September 30th, you look at, oh, it's, it's already October 3rd. <laughs> October 2nd, I should say. Okay. So still just keep your eye on these right here. All right. So yesterday, the day before. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to make notes when, when one of them. Okay, look, look, Pluto just went stationary right here. Let me write this down. Um, Pluto on October 7th. It goes stationary and it goes out of retrograde. So here we go. That's October 7th. There it goes. Pluto just went out of retrograde and it's in Cancer. Oh, it's got Capricorn. Next. Keep your eye on these R's because they, they go one by one. All right. Saturn. Saturn on October 11th. Saturn on October 11th. Okay. All right. Look at that. No energies, no trines, no squares. Those are really very important. So it's going to be kind of dull uh, October 11th, right? Let me just see. Dull, dull, no major, no major, nothing. I mean, oh, that's a pretty nice conjunction. Oh, no, actually, I'm wrong. Look at this. Sun and Mars are going to be conjunct. I'm going to go over that. We're going to go over this, but I, I, that this is important. When is this? Is this this week? Oh, this is going to be intense energy. This is going to be intense energy from ten o'clock all day. This is going to be intense energy right there because we got they're pretty much almost conjunct. So, so you know, you're going to see, you could see, a uh, nice, nice sunspot, big sunspot over here. It's basically going to give us beautiful energy. That is going to be the six. Let me see. Okay. So that means October 5th, 2nd calendar, please. 5th, today's Saturday. Okay, that's gonna be a beautiful energy. And it's gonna, it'll probably start by Tuesday, Wednesday, and I just said uh, Monday. This is the 5th. Okay, this energy is gonna be beautiful. So definitely Tuesday is gonna be beautiful because it's the, it's the new moon, basically. New moon, moon conjunct sun, but you got Mars, look at that sun at 12, Mars at 13. So we got this fiery energy. Yes, we're driven to do a lot of things, but because everything else is retrograde, you know, uh, it's kind of like, it's like, we don't even know which way to go, like a chicken without a head type of thing, right? So, but uh, we did have that good news that Saturn went, oh, that was on the 11th. Okay, so Saturn's going to go uh, out of retrograde and which Pluto already went is going to be going out of retrograde the next day too. So this is good. Let's see how else. Well, let's do the, well, let's keep an eye on it. While we, okay, so Pluto went stationary here. We went through that. We went to the 11th. I went back a bit. So sun is going to maintain conjunct and with Mercury too. So our minds are going to be clear, you know, Um well, we're still retrograde, but it's going to be a lot of mental, you know, Mars energy and it's in Libra. This is, I mean, it's good for us to get this. I just can't seem to, I'm getting stuff done. I'm just like, not like, you know, how I was in the summertime. I was like, boom, 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 boom. All right, let's see what we got here. 10th, 11th, Saturn goes stationary and then it gets out of retrograde. Okay, that's a nice energy here. This is going to be Eve. Let me see here. Would, would it be evening? Um, let me think. It's definitely going to be evening. So this is going to make our evenings on the 12th. On the 12th, when this goes down, we're going to see the sun. The sunsets are going to be amazing on this day. But, but the energy is in the morning. When we're dead, we're going to be like, Bleh. as soon as the sun gets back, like 4 o'clock or so, we're going to, we're going to light up. And uh, where's the moon? The moon is already here. So that, see, this is important. These are the days on these days. It's when the moon, everybody, like if you go to the gym, 
there's certain days where you go in the morning, oh my God, it's lit. There's 200 people in the gym. It's like a 300 pe- a person capacity. And you're like, what the, what's going on here? You know. And then if you, on that same day, if you go in the evening, it's dead, completely dead. And then it's the exact opposite. It's all because of the moon. I'll show you right now. I'm going to go by hour. Boom, boom, boom. See, because at sunset, Right at sunset, the moon is right above us. So we get all that energy that we get all that energy. And then it's going to be a good, uh, you know, this is like, you know, there's no moon, you know, when the moon was here, but these evenings are going to be good. Plus, well, the moon was going to be conjunct Venus probably two days earlier. So the 10th, 9th and 10th are going to be nice because the moon's going to conjunct Venus. That's going to be, maybe we'll get like happy <laughs> again. And then, and then it goes to Saturn. That's a little heavy when, And as soon as it shoots into Jupiter, when the moon goes conjunct Jupiter, that's going to be great. So we'll see when we'll keep an eye on that. See when that happens. All right, let me go back by day. Next. The 12th. Okay. Saturn. Yep. Oh yeah. We, we remember because of the 11th. So Saturn goes out of retrograde on the 13th, but so I, I wrote that down. Let's see what else. Let's see what that moon is. Oh, the moon was over here. So around like the 14th, the moon was conjunct Jupiter. That's going to be a good energy on that day. You know, if you want to plan your days, I am. I'm going to check the astrology. I'm going to go, all right, Thursday, I'm going to go here because, you know, it's in my favor from based on my natal chart. You know, it's like, you know, when my moon is right on Jupiter, I'm a Jupiterian. So, but not, you know, if you're a Capricornian, you know, you're going to rule when the, when the, when the moon is on, on top of or right before getting on top of Sagittari- uh, Saturn here. You know, if you're like a Capricornian, you know, like, uh, uh, you have that you have some strong dominant saturn energy in your in your chart or a lot of earth you know i'm fire i'm a lot of fire um i have five planets in sagittarius all right next and then that's it i'm gonna just wrap it up right here we'll look okay we'll look at that two two just one stationary mercury and jupiter oh this is gonna be great look 18th Whew. So it's going to be going into Scorpio season because in three days, you know, on the 21st, it goes into Scorpio. But look, two planets right here, they were retrograde on the 17th, 18th. They go out of retrograde. They go stationary. And then, oh, thank God. So by the 21st, thank God. So this is going to be a really, really powerful energy. Let's see what else we could see. Sun is, uh, you know, Sun and Mars is going to one two, three, one, two, three, four. I can't even tell if this is a trine or a square. Um, Sun at 27, Saturn at six. It's not, but it's Mars. Let's see what Mars is, 23. It's somewhat of a, it's somewhat of a one, two, three. Yep, it's a trine. Well, one, two, three is a square. Yeah, it's a square. It's somewhat of a square with Saturn, Sun, and then as Sun goes, yeah. So we did. It must have just been that. Must have been last week or two weeks before where the Sun was was just squaring Jupiter. Uh, or is that coming? Oh, that's coming up. Yeah, of course, it's coming up. That's going to be nice for me, definitely. Plus, we're going into Scorpio season. I, I, yeah, I'm king for a day. I'm king for a day in Scorpio. And when the sun goes into Scorpio and Sagittarius, I'm king until Christmas. And then, you know, and then even a couple of days, you know, the twilight into like the new year. And then, you know, it's hard for me. I do not like the cold. So this is definitely, look at this, the 20th. This is going to be something to look forward to. And there's not too many more changes. But I, so I'm just going to go day by day, day by day, quick as possible, and see if there's any change. See what I can see. No changes. No changes. I'm not going to even look at the chart to see. All right, now let me go by a week now. By week, we're already into November 3rd. November 17th, Neptune, baby, 
Neptune just went here. Did you see that? Look at that. Now, you see, we got Neptune down here is retrograde on the 24th of November. And that, that's going to be positive. This is going to be, a, this is going to be, it's, it's open up to be a nice, uh, you know, the heaviness that I was mentioning was what we're going through right now for the next two weeks. That's it. Once this is done, it's going to, it's going to pick up. It's going to pick up, baby. It's going to pick up nice. We'll get this pack done. And then we'll have our, where my money appointment. We're like, yo, where my money? Oh, hi, United States Treasury? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to make an appointment. Uh, where my money? <laughs> Uh, a little comic re comedy relief or comic relief. All right, so so Neptune, look at this baby. November twenty fourth, November December first. That's it. Let me get you know the exact day. Oops. That's it. December third. December 2nd. So December 2nd, Neptune finally goes out of, on December 3rd, it goes out of retrograde right there. That's going to be phenomenal. Oh, thank you. Thank you, God. Uh, now I'm going to go by week again. Okay, something just went out and then one, and then Venus went in. So Chiron, these planets are important. I have to do more research and stuff on these, but I'm not even looking at the chart to see what, what conjunct, because all the conjunctions and the moon cycles, I'm going to do a lot of videos on this. This is very important to know, at least to open your mind. You know, here, look, moon, I believe this is Lilith. Yeah, uh, North Node, it doesn't show it. I always get these mixed up, North and South Nodes. They don't even show them here. Oh, no, here it is. Yeah, I, be yeah, I believe that's the North Node. North Node, this is Uranus. Let me see if I know them by heart, right? Uh, Uranus, Chiron, Neptune, Jupiter, Saturn, uh, Venus, Pluto. Uh, what is this? Fortune. This is Mercury, Sun, Mars, South Node, VX. What's VX? Vertex. And that's it. And then these I already showed you that I know. So right here on December 18th, right before Christmas, Venus is going to go into retrograde, but, but uh, oh, I'm going by the week. So Venus goes into retrograde, it's going to stay retrograde for a while. Mercury is going to go retrograde again in, by the new year on like January 22nd. All right. I want to see when Jupiter. Oh, look, I want to know when Jupiter goes. It went into Pisces. This is going to be in, in the fall. That's great. Jupiter loves it here. Uh, Jupiter loves it here. I want to find out when that happened because that affects me a lot. It's going to fly. That thing was flying through Neptune. Did you see that? Uh, I mean, I should fly into Pisces. When that comes in conjunct, it's going to be after the new year. Oh, man, we are really going to get all this paperwork back. I, I don't know if I'm going. I probably have to go down to take all my paperwork and go down to Florida instead of Brazil so I can keep working because this is going to be too positive of an energy. But if I, I really need some sun, though. So Jupiter on right around Christmas. Oh, thank God. So right around Christmas, Jupiter gets back into Pisces because it retrograded. It was already in Pisces, like almost halfway in. It retrograded. Now it's going forward. It was flying, flying. It's going to fly past Pisces. Let's see this thing. One week, two weeks, January 1st, January 8th, 15th, 22nd. Because it, it, it's supposed to take one year to get into past one sign, but that's it's going much faster than that. So Jupiter is going to be, the justice energy is going to be sweeping right through. Then it's going to come conjunct Neptune. Let's see if they're going to be forward moving. Neptune is already forward moving here. All right, look at this. He's blasting through. Blasting, baby. Blasting, baby. Yes, baby. Throw this light on. And then the sun comes conjunct. Oh, that's going to be such a beautiful end. We're going to have a great late, uh, late January and February. This energy is going to be amazing. Oh, my God. This energy is going to be amazing right here. You know, they're somewhat, they're almost conjunct because when the sun's going to be, it's going to, it's going to magnify Jupiter's energy. It's going to be like, blue, 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 blue,
Mm -hmm. And then it's and then when it passes Neptune too, I mean we'll be in like justice dreamland. This is when we're gonna be watching all the all the movies of of like uh, liberation and you know like in the war war with like freedom at the end. You know with a good ending. That's the energy, and then that's what we're gonna want to watch because this is gonna be winter time. Winter time. You know, you just follow what the energies are, unless you're calcified. If you're calcified, you're going you're gonna to watch what they program you to watch on Netflix, you know, and through, I don't watch anything that has commercials. I don't watch the commercials are, are programming. Even I even on my YouTube, I even pay so I don't get any commercials. I pay $17.99. It's like a family plan. All right. So now this is going to be a beautiful energy. Oh, that's going into March already. See? That's already good. So the so the middle to middle part of January to all the way through February is going to be great. Based on this, for me at least, you know, unless you have a weak Jupiter, and but generally speaking, generally it, it does affect the collective, but it also affects you, you know, based on your natal chart. And I could do, you know, I could do a if anybody's interested, I can do their natal chart, tell them a lot about themselves, you know. Uh, I haven't, you know, I mean, I, I do it, but I, you know, I never charge, but you know, now my time is very precious. So if you're interested, you know, hit me up, you can cash at me and then, uh, I can, I can do that. Let's see here. March 12th. You see that here. Uh, so sun passes Neptune and then I want to see when Jupiter is going to be going into, look at that. When Jupiter goes into Aries, I think I saw it was like May, June. That's going to be, that's it. That's I knew next year was going to be an amazing year. So Jupiter is going into Aries. There's going to be a lot of this BL, like the, um, I don't want to say BLM, but a lot of those city protests and stuff. And they're going to start early because, because uh, let's see what else is going on. Venus, where is Mars? Oh, that is Mars. Mars. When Mars, if Mars and Jupiter go, let's see when Mars and Jupiter go into Aries. Because ju when Jupiter goes into Aries, it's going to get pumped. It's going to get pumped because it loves Aries. Fire, fire. Mars is right behind Jupiter. Wow, this is going to be like, like terrorism. Oh, this is going to be, this is going to be a lot. This summer is going to be bigger than last. You know how we had those, all those protests, France and everything. This is going to be big. Look at this, Mars and Jupiter in Aries. And then uh, look, Mars in, uh, in Aries. Look at this, Mars, June. Look, Mars, Jupiter in Aries. This is intense, intense, intense. And then this is good. like the next two years are going to be, well, let's see. Let me go and see when Jupiter. Uh, so this area, June and July, May, June and July with Mars and Aries is going to be intense. With Jupiter there uh, is going to be intense. Plus Saturn is rule is 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 in Aquarius. It, it loves it in Capricorn and Aquarius. So it's going to be a fight. This is going to be a fight of the uh, battle of, of uh, rules and regulations and freedom and liberal uh, liberalization. You know, liberation. So rules, regulations, It's going to be crackdowns, police, and then over here it's going to be freedom fighters. You know, um, Venus is in Gemini. Well, and then plus Venus is going to be in Taurus if we go back. So it's, it, you know, there's going to be a, a, like in a, you know, like a hint of, of, uh, of, of, of flower. Um, what's that? What's that big festival they had? Woodstock. It's going to be a bit of like a Woodstock type energy. You're going to be, you're going to have, you know, people that are nonviolent going to be having, I already saw this in visions, um, in visions. And then Venus, you know, is going to go into Cancer. And then Leo, it's going to be like a summer of kind of, of war and love. You know, uh, like there's going to be like a, a, there's, there's a big divide. You know, there's going to be the people that are going to take the vaccines. There's going to be people that are not, which are these two, you know, Jupiter and Saturn. And then there's going to be people that don't even give a shit about any of this. They just want to have that summer of love, like, uh, you know, like Woodstock. You know, and I already know because I'm, I'm already working on it. You know, I'm going to have something. I'm not going to say the name of it um, because, you know, uh, if I say it, then it gets taken and then people start using it. And it's like, you know, but I'm already planning on making a big, big festival where I am. Uh, we're going to secure some land and then it's going to be a big, um, you know, big festival. 
all secured, private, you know, private um, security, and you know, people gonna they're gonna be checked, you know, when they come in. We just want we just want to have a good time, you know, have a podium, like have uh, concerts and stuff again. We're not allowed to have concerts here in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then then try and stop us. Try and stop us because I'll, I'll go and buy two speakers and and you know just uh, just play music, you know. Uh, I'm going to redevelop a beach in my local area, you know, as soon as I get some funds, then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to open up a dredging company that makes beaches, because I have a big beach I want to cult, you know, I want to develop down in Colombia, and then and then also over here in the summers, maybe the, sh the ship would come up here, if it's not too, pra if it's not impractical, but then I'll buy another one up here, you know, for, for the East Coast, you know, so we can have your like little tribal lands, you want to have your, uh, once, if you're going to start going and search for uh, properties, um, it does not matter if it's in a flood zone because you could build up flood zones, no problem. You could raise it up six feet because we'll 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 take uh, you know we'll mine it. You're unlimited. You're unlimited. You're going to mine stuff. You want to have something uh, near the water, near the water, so you can park your yacht there. You'll have a dock. You'll, we'll dredge it so it's deep, you know, and then we'll put stones in it so it won't go lower. And then and then you're going to have your yacht come right up there. And then down the line, we're going to have yachts that you're going to be able to drive your vehicles in. So this way you can or, or you know, maybe we could crane them in, you know, into the storage uh, uh, area of your yacht. You know, I'm talking about big vessels. So this way you can take them down. You can take them down to wherever you want. Take them down to a Caribbean island. You know, you can't do that. or by aircraft, you know, or by aircraft. Right, let's stick to this here now. So that's interesting right here, July 9th. Let me just check the YouTube quick. Okay, all right, so this is interesting and that looks like it's going good. So it'll be recorded, you can watch it. Not too many people on a live. It's a Saturday afternoon, July 9th. Let's see what else happens. Well, let's see what's gonna happen. You know, uh, let me just go, let me zoom through. Let me go into let me go into July and August here. Yeah. There's the sun. So when the sun is in Leo, we're gonna have Venus. So so the summer, it looks like we're gonna have Venus continue to be in front of the sun, which for us means that we're gonna have that Venetian energy throughout the entire 2021. It's not gonna be the morning star. Oh, it is gonna be the morning star. I'm so, I mix these two up a lot. So look, let me go back. You can imagine when the sun rises, Venus turned into the morning star. Before it was over here, this, this fall. So now it's gonna be the morning star. So we're gonna have, uh, Let's, I, this, is in, this is important. Let me go by month. Let me see when that happens. I'm going back June, May. So Venus, yeah, let me, let me do this. Let me do a couple of 12 hours for a second. Okay, see, when the sun is rising, Venus is going to, uh, uh, Venus and Saturn and Jupiter are going to be, this is in April, they're going to be, so that means at the pre-dawn, this is what you're going to, at four o'clock in the morning, you see five o'clock in the morning, you're going to be dreaming, like, you know, you're going to have those, well, it's not at noon, but you, it's going to reflect the energy from the sun, um, and look at this, so we're going to have more, it's going to be morning um, season, we're going to get a lot of stuff done in the morning in March, April. That's good because I'm a morning person. So March, April, we're going to have a lot of energy in the mornings. See, because in the evenings, in the evenings, all we have is Uranus over here and nothing. See, now I'm going to go by month. Watch. May. See, beautiful morning energy. Beautiful morning energy here. Venus, Jupiter, Neptune is going to be is going to be is going to be greeting us in the morning. Amazing, amazing. This I, that's when I get the most work done. Anyway, it's going to be amazing energy. Beautiful, beautiful months coming up. We just have to get through this little hump. That's it. We have to get through this little hump.
And I think I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it there. I already found out when Jupiter went into Aries, you know, and we found that out together. I can't even remember when it was. It was March, I think. Yeah. September into Aries. That's Taurus, Gemini. That's 2022. And we went over the Helio chart. We checked this daily. And which timeline? Let me see here. Let me see a progression, how this went. All right. All right. So I hope this uh, was interesting and helpful. And if you're, you know, not a subscriber, if you'd like, you know, subscribe, like, hit the notifications, share, do what you do. Um, oh, look, more planets go retrograde. I didn't even check for that. This is September 22. Let me see here. So a, a lot of planets starting June, July start going retrograde. Look at that. Yep, May. So planets start going retrograde, but this spring is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be great. No planets retrograde. Plus, we're going to have all this beautiful morning energy. So I'll just probably just skip town for a month, you know, from that, from like Christmas to like January, just to get some sun to get me through in. And I hope I can get like a, a private jet flight because I do not want to fly coach. So we got to get cracking so we can do some of these 1099s and pay up a whole year of, 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 of flights with a jet company. This way you can take your family on vacation you know, with, on private charter instead of instead of going coach. I don't care, no first class, no nothing. I want to go, I don't want to pay, I want to pay for it by 1099. Done. All right, let me stop sharing and I hope you enjoyed wholeness.